What happened on Bloody Sunday was both unjustified and unjustifiable. It was wrong. They fired 108 rounds of live ammunition in the fleeing crowds, resulting in the deaths of 14 people and the injury of another 14. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Ah, uh, welcome to all new people. Yes, to new people. Indeed. If you are new around here, we are Borders and Beyond. And we are currently kind of going on a couple of trips around Ireland to see more of our beautiful country. So in this episode, we're focusing on our trip to Derry uh, about three or four weeks ago. About that, yeah. Well, so uh, this was the last stop on our Northern Ireland trip. Yeah, our kind of main goal when we got to Derry was to kind of learn more about its history. I, we, we, we knew about the troubles that were in the north. Again, part of what we explained in the Belfast video with the Falls Road. Ding, ding, ding up there. <laughs> but, yeah, so we wanted to know about Derry's involvement with the Troubles and uh, the most notable one being Bloody Sunday. So I kind of just wanted to know how such a small city could have such a huge history and huge involvement in mm -hmm. the Troubles in the North. This this tour was the Bogside Tour. It was organised by our friend Joe, who we met in Turkey. Say hello to Joe. Meet Joe. We brought Joe on the tour with us. <laughs> 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 we met Joe in Turkey. But we're not turkey. We're not, we're, turkey. Not, we're not turkey. So the tour we went on was organised by Joe and it was with a company called Bogside Tours. The link will be in the description for them. Tour guide was Neil and he was great. So the tour started off uh, just outside the Guild Hall and um, just outside the city walls. Like Lee said, our tour guide was Neil. Meet Neil. He was he was a great tour guide to have because he was able to kind of give us first hand information. As such. So he, he wasn't involved in it himself. He'd said to us that he was 50, so 50 would have made it, he was two years of age when it happened. Neil began kind of way, way back and explained to us kind of the history of the city walls, which we will get into later. So he brought us towards the bog side on our tour, which is where Bloody Sunday happened in such a small area. So as we were walking down towards the bog side, he gave us a kind of indication as to what what actually led up to, to Bloody Sunday. So the reason that there was the march, the the kind of the things that happened prior to that, the conflicts with police, conflicts with the armies, wherever it was leading up to that. So we're in the 69. This is when uh, a group called the Apprentice Boys, who remember the siege and the Protestants who defended the city against uh, King James, they marched along here. There used to be Catholic homes up along here, Bogside homes, at the edge of the wall. They used to throw down pennies as an insult as they were passing. They would also march the, the corner of William Street and the city centre. Bogside. The edge of Bogside. Fighting broke out on the 12th of August 69. The police move in. The police start pushing the people back in towards Russell Street here. Backed up by about 2,500 of the marchers. But they couldn't get past the 10th story. Got the flats, the Russell Street flats, because there's people on the roof throwing down pepper bombs, people on the ground doing the same. It was a very community effort. The able body took turns at the front line. The older people on the block side were making the pepper bombs for them and getting them shipped up. That went on for three days and two nights, continuous riding. That became known as the Battle of the Block Side. Okay. It ended when the police were exhausted and the police asked for help, and that's when the British Army came into the streets. British Army came in to Derry. They didn't come into the bog side, they stayed at the uh, at the uh, William Street, the bottom of William Street. They were seen to be holding back Protestants, the police were attacking the area. So leaders from the bog side went and met with the army and the army's response was, no, we're not interested in your area. We're here to keep these people back. And that became known as the honeymoon period. So the honeymoon period on all good crack. Right? And then all, all the government in Belfast, the Unionist government, they weren't happy that areas like the Bogside would be left alone and they demanded that the army come into the area. The army started coming in, carrying out search operations, arrest operations, and this in turn brings young people into confrontation with the British Army. Okay. Riots would break out and the army's response was usually rubber bullets. Rubber bullet. Non-lethal. 
1971, the IRA were not strong in Derry, there was no need for the IRA. But in 1971, the soldiers opened up with live rounds. They killed two young people in the city here in the one day. Right. They were the first two people to die bullet wounds in Derry. And the IRA seen a group. Three armed and the violence obviously increased. The violence increased throughout the north and the British government's response to that violence was internment without trial. Where you can be arrested and taken straight to prison. 9th of August 71. No judge, no jury, no evidence required to go to prison. So that was internment without trial. From there, he kind of brought us um, to, to loads of different murals that are painted on the walls of the bog side, which represent different things, different events that happened during Bloody Sunday, kind of different key, key events. I don't know, whenever I got these one of these Joe, who's that? It's my Uncle Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Should I got that? Yeah. He took us to a mural that he and he explained to us that Bloody Sunday took place in such a small area of the bog side. This is very interesting if he's come in a wee bit. This is where we're stood here now. Right? You see your blue and red signs here? That's the dead and the injured. So this is where the Russell Flats were, as I explained here. Mm -hmm. You look at the deaths and injuries on the roadway here, beside us, okay. and in the square where I'll take these later on over here. Okay, so bloody Sunday happened here in this area. This area. Not a mile or two. No. It happened in a very concentrated, small couple of hundred yards. We walked, we walked from here. No, we walked up here. Oh, we? Okay. we walked the same yeah. way the soldiers oh, yeah. came in. That's the restaurant. Ah, yeah. That's the restaurant gotcha, there in gotcha. the corner, right? Yep. So. That's what Bloody Sunday happened, I'll explain more. So, as we explained before, it started off as a, a civil march protest. And what had happened is they had planned to go to the Guild Hall, but the army had come in and they had basically barricaded off the city walls so, so the protesters couldn't go there. So they turned right down towards the bog side, down towards the Free Dairy um, mural. Oh and a couple of protesters had stepped back and they were throwing rocks and stones and the army retaliated and they were uh, shooting rubber bullets and um, tear gas and water cannons which was the norm in the, Derry. the norm but then things kind of according to neil things kind of just took a turn seven minutes past four the soldiers gave the order to come on they come on Spent around 17 minutes here. They fired 108 rounds of live ammunition in the fleeing crowds, resulting in the deaths of 14 people and the injury of another 14. All who died were male, mainly young, as we've seen in the monument already. Six 17 year olds. Okay. Two females were injured that day. Peggy Day was shot in the leg, and Alana Burke was crushed. An 18 year old was crushed by an army vehicle. Thankfully, both survived. Okay, so this is the, the mural from that day, Bloody Sunday. Jackie Duddy is a victim, 17 years old. You see the priest? The priest became Bishop of the city, Bishop Daly. Died a few years ago. Uh, the soldiers, the soldiers! They're from the Parachute Regiment. The Paras are seen as the killing machine of the British Army. The Paras were not here in Derry. They were not based in Derry. They were brought into Derry that morning to police a civil rights march. The police chief in Derry, a man called Frank Lagan, he went crazy when he heard the decision that these people were coming. As did the soldier who was in charge of Derry at the time. They didn't want the Paras anywhere near Derry. The world's media were here, they watch the cover of the march. And so there's a lot of footage. A lot of these reporters said what they seen. And the British government were under pressure. The British government then announced that an inquiry would take place 
and the inquiry should have happened here in the area in 1972, but it didn't. The inquiry took place at the town called Coleraine. Can you imagine here? It's a unique town. Yeah. Right. Look at that, we go for people from the area to travel. Only three witnesses were called from Derry, the rest were British soldiers, British military witnesses. And the judge said at the end of it that the soldiers did no wrong. But some might have bordered on recklessness, but you know, all he died were gunmen and bombers. He died the soldiers. So that was the official line of the British government. Go, uh, the government in 1998 agreed, at the time of the pre peace process, they agreed then that Bloody Sunday would be re examined. So a new Inquiry was set up. It was overseen by a man called Saville, Lord Saville, and it took place in our town hall, Guildhall. Okay, so it lasted 12 years in total from start to finish. Right. When it finished in June of 2010, David Cameron was the first person to read about, read the report, and speak about it. The families had read the report, but they weren't allowed out of the Guildhall. They weren't allowed any mobile phones or anything, no contact. So they were locked in before David Cameron would get his 10 minutes of glory. And he stood up and he said what happened in Derry was unjustified, unjustifiable, it was wrong. And he apologised on behalf of the British government and the British Armed Forces for what they did here. Okay. And then he said, but our army is still the finest in the world. But still at that point nobody was charged for the murders of those 14 people and in 2019 only last year there was one person charged and that was soldier f and in fact the unionists they they stand in solidarity with this soldier and as we drove through unionist parts of of Nor Derry, of northern ireland in general of northern ireland in general yeah we found that there was purple flags with an eagle on it and we didn't know what they were until Neil explained that these flags were actually flown in support of Soldier F. So moving on from the events of Bloody Sunday, Neil also gave us an insight into the hunger strikes, uh, which we spoke about in our Belfast video, Bobby Sands, and there were two locals in Derry who were also involved. 1970s, if you go to prison, which a lot of people did from these communities, you go to a place called Long Cash. It's like a prisoner of war camp style prison. The old Nissan Hutch you'd see in the movies, the war movies, right? When you enter that prison, you're classed as a political prisoner. This means you wear your own clothing. This means you're in your own area. You look after your canteen, your education has been looked at by your peers. So you're being learning the politics, the history, the language. It's all a huge uh, part of prison life. 1976, the British government built a new prison. They called it the maze, we called it the hitch blocks. When you enter a new jail, you've lost your political status. You're classed as a criminal. You're handed a prison uniform. If you refuse to wear the uniform, you're struck naked and placed in a cell. All that you have in your cell is a mattress on the ground and some blankets. So you wear the blankets as clothing. The men used to try and attempt to go to their bathrooms or a shower area, but they would be beaten. So they refused to go to their cells and they would go to a toilet in the cells. They would get rid of their waist out the window and then the grills were put on. They prevent them from putting their waist out the window. So you had to waste the floor. So what do you do? You lift it with a mattress and spread it on the wall. On the wall, it dries in quicker and the smell dies off quicker and it gets it off the floor. Okay? So that was a condition for four years. So that was the blanket protest and the no wash protest. 1981, Bobby Sands, the leader of the IRA in the prison, he said, enough. And he decided to go on hunger strike. A week after he went on hunger strike, a local MP died. Bobby Sands stood for election and was elected to Parliament by the people of Fermanagh and South Tyrone. While in prison? While in prison and on hunger strike. Many people thought Margaret Thatcher wouldn't let him die, but she di he, he died after 66 days on hunger strike. And nine other men followed him that year, 1981. Okay. This mural here remembers the two men from Derry, Patch O'Hara on the left and Michael Devine on the right. Michael Devine was the last hunger striker to die. He died in August of 1981 and a few weeks later the prisoners called off the hunger strike. But a month after that the men received their own clothing. So after a bit of lunch 
Joe decided that it'd be a good idea for us to go on a walk around the city walls itself. We have a great tour guide with us, uh, Joe, who um, knows nothing about Derry, and he had to come on a tour with us. He was born and bred in Derry. <laughs> to learn about it, not right, Joe? Born and bred, represent BSE. Don't <laughs> <laughs> fuck all about it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the walls were built in around 1613, there or thereabouts, and it was mainly to protect the English and Scottish settlers that were brought to Northern Ireland to uh, colonise, essentially. Mm -hmm. So we were actually able to walk around the top of the walls and look down on the city and look down on the outside of the city for approximately, I think it's one mile in, a, in circumference. Yeah. And that gives you an indication as to how small a city actually is. It's such a small city. A bit of a third wheel on this trip. The thing that it was most famous for was the Siege of Derry, which happened in 1668, when basically a Catholic army try attempted to get into the city walls and uh, the apprentice boys shut the gates. They said, no, not happening. walls you can overlook the bog side when you get to a certain point it's kind of just like the British soldiers did during the troubles and Joe was kind of explaining to us that even after the troubles even when he was growing up the troubles that were happening I suppose between the unionist teenagers and the, and the Catholic teenagers he was talking about you know riots that were happening and fights that went on and on the other side of the walls further along um, we were able to look over the fountain, which was a Protestant area, which years ago you could actually only get to through a gate. Joe was saying you had to go down the steps and in through a gate to get to the fountain area. And, you know, they made it kind of no secret that it was a Protestant area. There was, you know, the blue, white and red painted on the, the curbs. Just like in the Catholic area, they had their own murals saying Unionists, you know, different stuff. No, it's everyone. We kind of finished off the Derry Wall tour at the Derry Girls mural, which if you've not watched, I would highly recommend it. It's very funny. It's a comedy set in Derry during the Troubles, and it kind of gives a great depiction of what life was like growing up then. So once once we'd finished the walk along the wall, Joe actually decided he was going to try and take it one step further and give us another insight and a bit more of a tour. So he actually got in, we got into the car, he brought us deep into the bog side where the tour didn't go. So he brought us up, showed us a few different places, we've seen a few different murals. He brought us to Martin McGuinness's house. We even passed by the Brandywell, which kind of brought back a few memories for Lee. Yeah, I'd, I'd been up there years ago. The, the only other time I'd been in Derry other than this was when I went to the Brandywell Stadium to watch Bray Wanderers against Derry. And I... I still to this day i still remembered the murals and even when we were up there i asked joe could he bring us down by it because i wanted to see those murals again so i think that's pretty much it on our video dairy pretty much covers everything yeah so we kind of only went into it in minor detail again it's something we would absolutely recommend go and do yourself i would recommend watching the movie bloody sunday you can get it on youtube now Give it time because it is kind of like shaky and bitty, but it gives you a proper insight into the events of what happened on, on Bloody Sunday. Um, there's also another movie, it's called Some Mother Son, and that gives you a bit of an insight into uh, Bobby Sands and him uh, being in jail and the hunger strikes and stuff like that. So again, if you are from Derry and there are stuff we've missed out on, let us know because we're always on to learn more about kind of the events that happened and stuff like that as well. Before we actually sign off, I just want to say a really, really big thank you to Joe. Yes, definitely. Um, if anybody that's watching this is going to Derry, make sure you download an app called Anita Delivery. It's so good. So essentially it's an app that Joe has developed. It 
it's kind of like uh, a Just Eat or an Uber Eats, but instead of it being for for like a takeaway food, it's just for your general shopping. No, honestly, Joe is Joe is great. As we said before, we met him on a whim on a on a bus to Pam Calais and we automatically became really good friends with him and his wife Elaine and as soon as we mentioned to him in a text message that we were coming to Derry he was oh you're coming to Derry I'm gonna have all this stuff planned for you and he was constantly texting us going what do you want to do do you want to do a tour we'll go for a dinner I'll organize Lee wanted to go to the see the Man United match yeah I wanted to see the United match on the and Joe was like Grant I'll have a don't. table booked for you don't worry he was just he's just he's so great but anyway as always like, subscribe, and the ding bell. No the bells. So really hope you enjoyed this video guys, but we will see you in the next one. Peace. Bye.